52. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, June 4th, 2023. I'm Larry Rhodes, our DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. It's the Wombat. Hey. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you think you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, I once thought I was the only non-believer in town. But I started a group, and now we have over a thousand of us just in the group. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. And we'll tell you more about that after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? Atheism for profit, and while you're only in it for the money. Or profit. Yeah, the practice (laughs) of non-belief for the money, which is what the ultimate goal of all atheism, right? Is to make money. Yeah, where's my money? (laughs) (laughs) I'm not getting any. (laughs) uh, uh, Let's see, before we get into it, let's have a luck review session, figure out how we've been doing. I can tell you something for me. Uh, So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had my mom fly over from Virginia to stay with us for a bit or stay Mm -hmm. with me for a bit. And we had a really good time. I got an opportunity to cook a lot of different kinds of foods for her. Uh, One of the things that I find as a highlight is to show that I can cook and we made euros. We made uh, Mexican food, fully loaded nachos. We made pizza from scratch, from scratch, like flour, active yeast, made the bright crust, all that stuff. Johnny bread and a bunch of other island treats too. Um, that was really fun and showing like, hey, like the culture that was instilled in me since I was a kid, I still got it. Um, I refined it. I made my own little spins on it and I can share it back for like good feedback. And that was fun. Gained a lot of weight. Mostly just water weight, mostly water weight. It was like about 10 pounds. And I made an interesting promise to myself. I have this idea of like, when you make a promise to yourself, um, don't break it because those are like the most important ones for your self-control, right? And so I do this thing called a level eight promise where I'll like say the promise or I say promise like eight times in a row. And I've never broken a level eight promise regardless of whatever it was. It's just a realistic goal that's time-based and it's achievable. And this goal was when I, until I get back to maintenance weight, I'm not allowed to eat junk food, which is pretty simple. So like I had to lose about 10 pounds of water weight to get back to an idea where I can eat junk food, but I can still order fruits, meats, vegetables for sure. But I'm staying on the outside. Oh, you can order anything. You just can't eat it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't want to have that problem either. So like if a guy brings donuts to work, I can't eat that because that would break the spirit of the level eight promise, but I can still feed myself. I can still shop. So I would maintain that for like about a good week and a half until this weekend where uh, I said, okay, let's get rid of the last six pounds of water, you know, and got up, ran a 10 K got up, went to the gym, checked my weight again. I was like one and a half pounds away. So put on a sweatsuit, knocked it out. And I felt so good afterwards and uh, go back to, I think I went to, what did I say I'd do first? I wanted to rehydrate. And then I went to the store and got like, um, dang it, what was it? Chips and KFC. And I eat the chips and the KFC. And it's like this, in my head of what these things would taste like, Mm. it's so disappointing to what they actually taste like. If that makes any sense. It's sort of like the entire time you're you're dreaming of going to, I don't know, like Six Flags and going on a roller coaster. But the roller coaster is like 55 miles an hour. When the highway trip to Six Flags was like 70 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour. You're like... I don't understand why I work so hard for this, but um, I got it. And at least now I'm not bound by maintaining the willpower to not eat the junk food, but it's not as motivating when you're eating. You're like, this is what yeah. it was. All right. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. Yeah, it must be nice to to want to lose some weight and say, oh, I'll just do a 10 gate. And nice to have knees that work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mine are right. giving me a lot of trouble these days. Yeah, running's but, not good for you. So I hate, I hate doing the run to get rid of weight, yeah, but it's yeah. like the most effective way for me to get right. it. No, we went to the beach last weekend. Nice. Very nice. And uh, no, it wasn't really. Oh, no. <laughs> if you remember, there was a hurricane or at least a tropical distri- the depression or whatever off the East Coast last weekend. We got there on Friday and it never really showed sun until until uh, Sunday. Monday was our last day because we were coming oh. back on Tuesday. 
We actually got some sun on, on uh, Tuesday and the kids were able to take advantage of it. But walking on the beach, even that is too much on my, my knee. Mm. So we drove down to the pier, got a, up on the pier and listened to the karaoke and, and had a drink or two. So that was enjoyable. Good. Yeah. You know, I see people who get the, you know, we've had, we have people who are in rational East Tennessee who had got knee surgeries before and replaced both of them. And I've seen even in the gym that I'm at, people will go with like shots that like increase more of like the fluid stuff. I want us to just go to the, I want us to get to the point where it's, oh, my knee's bad. Cut off my leg. Give me one of those cool prosthetic legs and just let me like slide or, it in. I want to get to the point cooler. where, I want to get to the point where we can cut off the leg and it grows back within a week. No, <laughs> no, I don't want some weird malformed leg that I have to like maintain for a week. I, that's way too embarrassing. Okay, a day, the a day. <laughs> okay, a day is fine, but I want one yeah. cyborg leg. I want a cyborg yeah. body yeah. part. I think they're the, okay. the coolest things possible. Yeah. I was going on a tangent. Yeah. Anyway. Well, now tell me how you make all this money on atheism, using atheism. Sure, sure, sure. That's not a transition. I was working for a transition, Larry. We could have done better than that. Give me yeah, well. We I can't afford my cyborg leg until I get my money, though. And, and oh, I'm is waiting that for the, oh yeah, that's I'm a good transition. The, that's it. <laughs> it's, it's what I'm here for. It's uh, so the idea is a while back ago, I was talking to my friend about how I used to do talks on the nature of like free thinking mm -hmm. at places. And he made a comment that was essentially, he's a Christian, but he made a comment that was like, yeah, I know there's a lot of uh, money in atheism for those kinds of talks. Like, how much did they charge? How much did you charge? And I was like, I didn't charge anything. I just asked for my travel, not my, my hotel to be covered. Basically, that was it. Mm -hmm. I drove out there myself. And mm -hmm. um, it did make me think and that- And you, you didn't pass a plate or anything? I didn't pass the plate. No, I did not pass the plate. No, I didn't hawk a book. I didn't hawk a, a program or anything like that. All my stuff's on YouTube for free. Mm. But it did bring up an interesting idea that, at least from some people from the Christian point of view, that atheism could simply just be a market for selling something for profit, where Christianity is like the truth and and you can and the gospel. Anyone who's an atheist is in it for the money because that's a provocative position to have to say, oh, this thing's not true. And let me tell you why. And if anyone yeah. listens to me, it's like, well, now you got to buy my book. Now you got to pay tickets to my lecture hall. And I don't blame them for thinking that because the only exposure they have to atheism is the highest, you know, most marketed tier because they're not paying attention to the more subtle versions, which is like your neighborhood atheists or like just people in your immediate area. They're seeing stuff on TV with guys in suits, Christopher Hitchens, Richard Dawkins, um, the guys who are like, I am now hosting a debate in a cathedral hall filled with people and there's professional lighting and I'm just I'm just the, uh, a guy with an English accent saying, I don't understand why you believe in this. I don't understand why you believe it. Here's my pre-manufactured speech. And here are my book series and here's my book world tour. And when people say atheism, they say my name and I'm closely related to this, this new movement. And when I die, there'll be a new atheism for a new potential for marketing. And I can, I, what I basically saying is I don't, I don't, I don't besmirch the attitude that atheism is for profit from a Christian point of view. Because it does seem like it's something that, well, you know, the thing about it is they say, they, they say that, uh, you know, what about all you, you talk about the examples in Christianity where the preachers are just making my money hand over fist and they don't question that. Well, the, the, why, well he asked them about that and says, well, they need the money to spread the word of, you know, the yes, gospel. The community. You, you need know, a community. you have to pay uh, uh, television fees. You have to, uh, you know, mailing fees and, and all this stuff. But do they actually use it for that? Mm. Or do they buy yachts and, and, mansions and and cars when you look at their lifestyle they're not using it to spread the gospel they're using it to enrich themselves but christianity you know they just give it a slide but as soon as you talk about you know like me i've written a book and it's on amazon i make absolutely well let's say i don't know twenty dollars a year off the sales of that book it, it's not written i would have done it for free 
matter of fact, all the articles in my book are online for free right now. Right. It's but I have been accused of using atheism to make money. And you I have been. I have, sure. Ah. As okay. soon as I mentioned the fact that I've written a book, you know, they'll jump on that. It's oh well, a good way to make some money, huh? You know, completely giving their preachers a pass and and the evangelicals and television and evangelicals total pass. But as soon as anybody else uh, talks about atheism and, and uh, doing anything in it, you know, we're in it for the money. It's we're we're being uh, obtuse or uh, what greedy or right um, capitalistic rather right. than trying to spread uh, information to counter their disinformation. And I remember I I did start my um, I used to do videos on talking to people with why they believe and why they believe it. And they were really, really cool. I, I enjoyed it a lot. The The only issue was uh, I needed to buy equipment in order to support that. And I, out of my own money, got a table, got multiple cameras, got my uh, mic setups. And I had them because I always thought it would be good to have video, audio recording equipment just in general. And I could just put it like in a, in a drawer or a place in my closet. So I thought of it as just like a fun investment and a way to apply a new hobby that I could develop. But I also needed mm -hmm. to get the software license as well. I was in the I was in the hole for about maybe seven hundred bucks when by the, when it was all said and done, and so um, I set up a Patreon to help me at least not get back the money from the equipment that I bought, but at least the sometimes you have to buy tickets just to park at certain places, like at, on the university campus to get a a, a pass <clears throat> just to have that would cost money. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, you know, like I'm fine with having equipment that I could own and use for other purposes so like i can use that for recording disc golf videos for friends all that stuff but these specific <clears> things <throat> that i need just to do these talks it'd be good to have support on that it would be good to have support on just you know these ticket purchases it's not like i'm making even when i got the patreon to support the the purchase of like the travel and and the parking passes um i was still in the hole like it wasn't that big of a deal in terms of like the total cost of what it what it took with you know excluding all the labor that it took to like learn how to video edit and all that stuff right but yeah. i i would have done it again for free i would have done it anyway well just... it's more than just for free i mean we do this uh expending our own money so we do it in the hole you know right. i bought banners and buttons and cards right. and things Same. you know to support uh, my my sharing of information about atheism uh as opposed to uh, what i consider um Mis misinformation or mistruths right. uh, from the religious right mm -hmm. uh, in order to make the world a better place, a more right. logical place, a more rational place. And 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 for me, just to show like these dialogue systems aren't things that just exist in books that you have to pay for. You could uh -huh. see it demonstrated and see a different take on it compared to how it's being done uh, in different ways on the internet. And if everybody shows how they're doing it, someone could see that and realize, oh, I can take a little bit from this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and come up with my own approach for how to talk uh -huh. to people who are stuck in their dogma. Right. Um, I had a, I, like I said, it's something that I would have done for free. Yes, I did have a Patreon. Yes, I did have asked for hotel fees to be covered, but atheism, atheism was never a venture for, for, for money for me. And I know for a fact that like at any time I could say, Hey, Mr. Pastor, I'm a famous uh, YouTube atheist or whatever. How about I convert and you can pay me money and we can show, oh, this guy is a scientist. This guy said there was no God. Now he says there is. And here's a little bit of money on the site. Like it would be way more profitable for me to to if I was in it solely for the profit to go back to Christianity and claim that I was wrong the entire time than to maintain the current course that I'm on. And yeah, so you could do a circuit on that. Oh, yeah, part, absolutely. part of the plate and a fee. And the thing is, I know all the rambles. I can I can sure. preach like anybody else. Like if it really came down to it, I could be a really good preacher right now, just mm -hmm. due to the fact that I I understand how the 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 sermon works. I understand how it's like broken up, how it's phrased, and how to do it perfectly. Mm -hmm. You have a great rabble in your voice. You could probably <laughs> do a good <laughs> preacher impression if you had to as well. <clears throat> oh yeah, I, I could even get southern if I want to. Oh no, no, don't, <laughs> don't go back, go back. But I'm saying like, uh, we're not, it's not so much for the profit. It is for the purpose. And if you were to ask me, I have two purposes that are facing me right now. I have one where it's, okay, looking, I'm profes professionally not believing in God. 
seems absurd. I agree. Like professionally writing a book about why you don't believe in a God seems weird, right? Like you, what is this book about? Oh, it's well, it's about how I don't believe in something. It's like, why would you even write a book about that? The alternative is writing a book, convincing people that something that doesn't have a good basis for its existence does exist with all the confidence needed to, to make them believe it too. And in my head, that is purporting a poor methodology for understanding what is true and what is not true, which could be deliberately harmful for people who don't have a basis for understanding facts from from uh, not facts. And if you have this book that's out and you're making money off of it, you are profiting off misinformation, not only misinformation, but poor critical thinking skills and indoctrinating people by confirming their personal biases based on their environment and upbringing towards you getting money from them and hopefully never being harmed by whatever impact they may have in society, as long as they continue to echo chamber your thoughts. Yeah, well, that, that also brings us to another topic, if you want to get into it. Sure. Why do we do it? If we don't do it for the money, why do we do it? Why do you do it, Larry? Mm -hmm. Well, why I do, do it, it, well, to combat the harm of religion. Mm, and you point. say, what What harm? Religion doesn't do any harm. What, you know, there's nothing wrong with religion. I mean, it's all over the world. Sure. Well, religions have, not only do they have disinformation as their base, they have credibility as a, as a allotted capability or allotted attribute. Um, you're being um, told that you should believe things just so that you believe them. In other words, in, on faith alone. And yes. with faith, you can believe literally anything. That's how all the different religions on earth uh, maintain or continue. They just, you know, the preachers tell the, their people just to believe, don't worry about evidence. Well, that's, that's credibility and that's not good. Um, yeah. I, most I religions, wonder, go ahead. I wonder for a Christian, if it would be a good question to ask or any religious person, what's something that I couldn't believe with faith? Like if they, right. if I say, listen, tell me how you're, why you believe this. And they give me the process. I'm like, if I took that, what could I not believe with that process? And, right. and and I want to see how that, particularly on faith, is there anything that I couldn't hold on faith alone? Right. Like, well, it's not faith isn't enough. I can imagine that being the follow up mm -hmm. answer, but like then it'd yeah. be its own yeah. rumor tool. Anyway, Larry, sorry for interrupting you. Well, that's okay. Well, there's a whole list of things that there, that is harm caused by religion. Most religions are uh, chauvinistic. They're male-centered. Yeah. Which and, is surprising because uh, a lot of women support these ideals as well. Well, against because, their better interests. Well, that's because of the uh, built-in autocracy. Mm. You know, male autocracy and religions mm. are are a thing. Pretty much every religion on earth, um, you can't question. You have to obey. Period. And that's right. another harm that a religion uh, brings to the world. And that's another thing that we fight mm. by by doing what we do. Uh, unquestionable obedience is the problem. You, it, it leads to so many things, including wars, um, pogroms, exterminations, uh, if, what do you call it? Inquisitions, you know, unquestionable, uh, unquestioning the authority of the church. Right. I am, it also, it, so I will say this, it harms women immediately. And it also, also harms men as well. Because when you take women out of the equation, as far as like the availability as a think tank, what they can contribute in terms of like their force, their thought, their critical thinking, when you take them out of the equation and you only have men, you have a society that's half as capable as what it could be if it was fully realized. Well, that's so, a, a society that's ruled by testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> which leads to its own problems too. There's nothing yeah. to balance that out. So when you tell yeah. all... When you say, hey, women can't be engineers, women can't be doctors, women can't be this, that, scientists, et cetera, philosophers, et cetera, and you only laud a very select group of men that generally all look the same, right? Uh, you you run into a scenario where you ha are maybe competing against other countries or cultures that have a more balanced uh, uh, repertoire of thinkers that are fully capable and you only have that one select group that you've always put on that pedestal. Whether and the I thinkers or not, they use right. a book to justify what, you know, what they want to do. 
Um, and it's it's not just Christians that can do that. It's it's oh, basically oh, most it's, all religions. I think it's just the human condition to want to pat ourselves on the back, right? Truly, on it, honestly. And if one of the things that I've appreciated about the outspoken atheism that I'm doing and and why I do it is because I want to demonstrate that diverse perspectives are needed to improve thought processes and and it's not necessarily a commandment to adopt the thought process but it is good to be exposed to different ones and show that through the exposure of how different people think and different systems to analyze how they think you can come up with better systems on your own right to think as well and it sounds like such a basic thing but if you have dogma in your mind, if you have a, a hardcore bias that is instilled with you that fundamentally changes how you see reality, it inhibits you from appreciating the way how other people think or how other cultures behave or what other uh, uh, high points of thought came from certain people. Like if you say, hey, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a Christian, I don't have to listen to Muslims, Muslim philosophy or like famous Muslims. It's like you might want to because they may have things to say that are right, irregardless of whatever God they believe in. Yeah. And and, that, and and if you only know Christian or Western ideals, you're you're limiting what further growth you could have in this one lifetime. Yeah, and that's just philosophy. I mean, we yeah. haven't even touched on science yet. Yeah, the scientific absolutely. method. I mean, absolutely. religion will wants to suppress science wherever it, it disagrees with the claims in in their holy book. Right. Um, going from the origin of the universe to evolution to um original sin which is not a thing <laughs> sure but i mean it affects us all the way down to climate change right right it makes mm -hmm. things that are reality uh a thing where you have to tiptoe around it politically to not offend somebody when it's like arbitrary mm -hmm. objectively true objectively true uh -huh. and science is objectively true the method itself works mm. um, i have I, it also has a, a tendency to make conversations more vitriolic than they need to be like on the idea of climate change like we should be able to just say hey it's pretty clear we're having an impact and i think humanity i don't think the world the planet's gonna suddenly explode one day but i definitely do think that it'll be more inhospitable for billions and billions of human beings on this planet like if we if like i think we have a near unsustainable lifestyle that won't be able to support more humans and if we don't come up with a better way to change how we exist when everybody's operating like how we do in america we're humanity is going to be in danger not the planet the planet's going to be like oh that was a weird fever for a little bit <laughs> and be fine but humanity is mm -hmm. going to have a problem so it's in our best interest to look into this it's in our own best right. interest to look at this mm -hmm. Well, why are you bringing this up? Don't you know that God made this world for us? That progress exists for this? Don't you know that there's a plan? It's like, hey, 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 hey. I don't. I'm not trying to offend you by saying that your religion's wrong. I'm trying to look at the objective reality. Like, let's look at charts and science and try to figure out better ways. Yeah. Not well, we're go we're following the evidence, and and so far, yeah. religion has not brought any evidence. They simply bring claims, right? With, and with offense. no supporting, yeah, with no supporting evidence, right? Claims and offense, right? And morality arguments. And and the people that they elect into positions to support, you know, laws that govern how we pollute the world that we live in will be those that hold those same indoctrinated viewpoints. And so it's this really, really terrible self-fulfilling prophecy when you have people who don't believe in the science deciding what kind of science can be done. Ow! Yeah, Before it's like a, like Congress of Men deciding how women's bodies uh, should be regulated. Absolutely. Listen, yeah. it's like in the Olympics, they have judges who mm -hmm. never have done the thing that they're judging. <clears throat> I don't know if you knew about this. So like powerlifting in, in, in Olympics, the judges for powerlifting are not former powerlifters. They're just people wearing suits who are a third body organization who are following a criteria that they're looking at and trying to assess. So like when a powerlifter lifts a weight over their head, they're like, oh, well, that's not really over their head because their elbows weren't locked out. It's like, I'm I'm lifting this thing ring over my head. Like that, that counts. Like uh, not based on this rubric. So no, I'm like, do you guys power lift? Do you know what it, do you know that you understand that my, this only goes up so high? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I can't, 
I can't put it up any higher than my over my head. Like it's already over my head. Give me the gold medal. There's there's so many controversies in how Olympics runs and scores things because none of the judges are like former ice skaters or like former rock to avoid bias. I've destroyed a, an illusion of mine. I always thought they were. No, it's yeah, it blew my mind too. And I just yeah. like, why are the people who are judging it not participants in it? And so, like, why are politicians who don't believe in science or don't understand the science the ones regulating science? It's because they're being voted in by bodies of people who also don't agree and support the science. And I say that that is fundamentally a system that needs to be addressed because. Science is always in the interest of mankind, and a system that doesn't concern itself with that is not in our best interest, and we should be addressed as well. I don't know uh, if I'd go quite that far. I'd say science is always far. in the interest of truth. Now, sometimes it's in the advantage of humans. Uh, it, it depends on how we use the, the the facts, the evidence, the truth that comes from science, uh, okay. whether we be can benefit uh, humanity or not. I mean, science can develop uh, mustard gas, which is not really in the in the benefit of humans. Uh, but if we decide to use it against humans, it's not a good thing. But if we mm. decide to, you know, use the knowledge uh, to uh, say we shouldn't use this on humans, you know, then that I would say that's in benefit of humans. But it comes from more from morality, which is another point atheism addresses. Um, the Religious people will say that morality comes from their book. You know, you can't have morals uh, unless it's in the Bible. Um, but of course, obedience is not morality. You know, if you got 10 rules being laid down, or as in the Bible, 613 rules from mm. uh, Leviticus and Deuteronomy, uh, following those rules is not morality. It, it's right. not objective it's morality, it's, it's obedience. Best. Well, not only that, but some of them are downright bad rules. Right. Like one of the rules is, uh, you know, kill homosexuals. That's that's not a good thing. Uh, killing virgin, uh, non-virgins on their wedding night. Not a good thing. Not moral. And there's no way to make it moral. Mm -hmm. um, the thing about it is, if you follow all of the junctures that are in the Bible, you won't be able to stay out of jail very long. Uh, because we have our own set of moralities that we got from a secular secular society right. which is in their best interest of society for That's, now right? right like it's something and it's the, a system that can be improved upon which is, is absolutely better than what there we is got no the bible perfect system at this point hmm. and we probably should take a break about this point let's do it you're on a um, roll larry <laughs> find it uh, this is the digital free thought radio hour on wozo radio 103.9 lpfm here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We are now in our 21st year, have over a thousand members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top table, or if it's outside, I mean, if it's pretty weather outside, we'll be outside on the deck. We also have a Tuesday evening, first Tuesday of every month, Ask Meetup, ASK as a Zoom meetup. If you'd like to join us, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com. You can find us online at, on Facebook dot, well, Facebook.com, meetup.com, or knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start one. That's right. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? I wanted to talk about how a religion can insert itself into conversations where it's not necessarily invited, but has a much more vitriolic impact, a distracting and vitriolic impact. And I am a, reminded of a conversation, a heated debate that didn't need to be that heated in the disc golf community, believe it or not, 
because mm -hmm. in disc golf there are there's a division where everybody can play it's called the mpo it stands for mixed professional open so if you're young if you're old if you're a man if you're a woman if you're anywhere in between you can compete in this in this category and just see who the best is in this mixed category then they have that's MPO. Then they have MPO plus 40. So if you're if you want to play in the mix, but you're old, older than 40, you can play in that. And they have plus 50, plus 60, plus 80, et cetera. So based on age brackets, because some people who are younger can throw really hard, like there's a there's a point where your your physical capability is just better. Sure. Makes sense. But you're if you are 20, you can't compete in the MPO 40. Does that make sense? You because mm -hmm. you're blocked off on age. Right. They also have a separate division that is just for females. So you have the mixed and then you have the female division. The reason why they have the female division is because of just in general, women can't throw that hard compared to guys. It, 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 they, they, the best drivers typically are 200 feet past some of the best women. And so what they'll have is a female uh, FPO course that is on the, uh, on a slight, sometimes it'll be if on a slightly different course where they have like the professional tees and the uh, the FPOTs, which are a little bit yeah. closer to the basket, so they can have an easier time throwing to the basket. And that way, uh -huh. the numbers don't look that bad when the best female players and the best male players play on the same course. Um, and it gets more people encouraged. Now, then that's the nice thing, because it, it gives people a place to see females play. And that might help encourage more females to be able to play as well and, and see, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. And their scores are, are, are balanced out so that they're roughly around the same and females can have a place in the sport as well. And if they want to, they can play in the mixed as well. So it's not like all females just play in the FPO. They can also play in mixed as well. And, and a lot do. Well, how the, did the religion come in? This is where the religion comes in. It's a good point. Uh, so the idea is there was some controversy because the uh, Disc Golf Association has said um there have recently been a influx of a small influx of transsex or trans players ma male born transition to female uh in the fpo division and they started to win tournaments and the females who were there the female born ones were w couldn't necessarily complain against it because they didn't want to have to deal with the social media onslaught of dealing with oh you're you're transphobic it was more of like, what's the, what is the spirit of this division? What is it trying to protect? And does the idea of having trans players in this division who are winning take away from what the idea of what this division was to begin with? Because they can drive really, really, really far. They won like the distance throwing champion. It's like, but is that, I'm not, we're not saying you're not women. We're just saying, is that what the female FPO is for? And instead of having like in my head a uh, a rational conversation about what the spirit of the division was for and the idea that there is a mixed division for everybody and that maybe uh, uh if you're trans you and you're not female born it could be a better place for you to be an mpo where you can compete against high tiers and maybe we make a different category in the mpo or something like that um it became a very vitriolic religious based conversation one where if you were even if you're on the side of, I don't think trans are the best fit for FPO, you you were you were on the same side as people who are like, they're they are as they are akin to Satan. They are sinners, oh and they There's don't understand demonic. that God had a plan. And I God didn't make Adam and Eve and Steve like or whatever. It's just like these weird archetypical arguments from very ignorant religious people. Yeah. And I and it was very hard to to separate yourself from the idea of like, listen, there's a logical basis for what we're trying to say, but I'm it's really unfortunate to be on the same side as these people as well, because they're only making this conversation way worse right. and targeting mm -hmm. people who just want to play disc golf. Like at the end of the day, like this is a fun sport for everybody. We're just trying to figure out a proper way to categorize the skill sets based on biology. And can right. we like come up with a simple way of doing this objectively rather than making it personal or even yeah. dogmatically damning people's souls at the same time. Too. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm in agreement. There is a case to be made that um, cisgendered females should appear among themselves and, and cisgendered males in the, in their, 
Uh, it's simply because of the dynamics of the the physiology. Yeah. Uh, like, like let's say that you're competing against a woman. You've got longer. You're a bigger person. You got longer arms. You can right. generate more centripetal force, and and it's all physics. Yeah. You can when you let go of it, it will travel farther than a person with shorter arms and and smaller muscles. You know, it's there's there's a, a valid argument to be made. It's Calling a, it's somebody the, demonic is not yes. helpful. Right. It's just a function of the, my body makes testosterone. There is a biochemical uh -huh. advantage that I have. That is yeah. that is such a good hormone that, also, that it's used yeah. as a drug for some people to get stronger. My right. body naturally produces it. My body doesn't produce, what is it? Uh, God, Ram, the, man, now here's me with my biochemistry degree falling apart. The female, the female version of testosterone, estrogen. There we go. My body doesn't make as much estrogen. It makes a substantially very, very low amount. And not only that, but sure. estrogen counteracts the effects of testosterone. Uh -huh. So if I have a body that's mostly making estrogen and very little testosterone from a game that's based on physicality, game based on how far can you put power or how much power can you put into this disc when you release it and how fast can you throw it and how much force you can put into it. A body that's running on estrogen is at an immediate dis biochemical disadvantage than testosterone. It's like someone took steroids before they threw. Uh, what we're all what we're trying to do is figure out what's fair in the spirit of competition. Right. And we can do we can do it in so many more productive ways that it's not demeaning to the people's gender identity, like we do it in very respectful ways. But there, I felt like there was never a a course or an avenue for that kind of conversation. As soon as the religious right the 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 dogmatic religious point of views entered into the conversation more or less right. took over because mm -hmm. now the the people who were trans have dropped out out of fear for their lives there have been threats against their their life livelihoods people saying just really unfortunate just like very very genuinely motivated people saying absolutely ignorant vitriolic things against them personally saying like, listen, we're going to flood your Instagrams. We're going to track you down. If you show up on course, we're going to burn you down. And it's just like, why, why I, I was hoping, you know, to find that uh, a community of people that just love playing outside can get along with each other because there's not even that much money in disc golf to be fighting over it in the first place that uh, to, to just see this wave of ignorance just really, really hurts the conversation when the objective scientific truth about it is good enough to just say like, hey, this is a, what it is. Let's just break it up like this and everybody go on. And then FPLs can have their things. Trans can have their things. And then we still have the mixed division, which is for everybody. Like, let's just have it like that. That would work just fine. I don't know. Yep. Yeah, I agree. So religion is divisive. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Larry, the idea, though, that you can make money off of atheism, which we find to be a little, uh, it, it's, it's true, some people do make a profit off of it. But I did find that in comparison, making money off of atheism is nowhere near as bizarre as making money off of Christianity. And we know, and we definitely know that's the more lucrative of the two. Uh -huh. And the idea that you can make money convincing people of something that doesn't, let's, uh, let's be straightforward doesn't have any basis for existing is terrifying for me it's terrifying in the sense that you'll always have these two competing things i've always said this you said science isn't for in the interest of people it's in the interest of truth i agree truth though it's like brussels sprouts it's like just straight up raw brussels sprouts uh uh lies are like twizzlers and skittles <laughs> <laughs> they're delicious they look oh. great <laughs> they 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 don't satiate you but they keep asking you for more and more and more when you eat a skittle you're never like oh i'm so full you're like give me more skittles let me put a handful of those in my mouth right whereas they have no, no nutrients really yeah if you only had them to eat you'd, you'd probably die it's same thing with lies it's the same thing when i was on my weird uh promise diet sort of thing where i was just trying to get rid of the water weight like i work so hard for these junk foods that when I finally had a chance to taste them, I'm like, oh, this is junk. What am I wasting my time with? The same thing with lies, though. If if a pastor can sell lies, they can reproduce those far more easily than the truth. In order to For get sure. truth, like how we how we're trying to support, people have to actually go out and do a job and come up with observations that are fact checked with other people, yeah. and and 
are issuing out reports that then have to be translated for more laymen to be able to appreciate. And then it has yeah. to have a demonstrable impact on society where everybody can like agree, oh, this is a good thing. And it mm. doesn't have anything to do with God. Okay. Mm. And, and that takes a lot of work. Whereas a, a pastor could just be like, but God loves you. I can put that up on a billboard well, and what, I can get people to show up at Sunday. What's really funny uh, is we have a couple of uh, political parties in America right now that our main political parties one of them is using disinformation and lies to a much uh, greater extent than the other one. It, they're they're passing uh, uh, QAnon and and all kinds of other um, what do you call them conspiracy theories as truth. Right. The evangelicals, the religious, have a choice. They can back one party or the other. Guess which one they choose to to back. The one, one who's passing all these lies. Yeah. And they're doing it in force and they're doing it seriously with serious consequences. I mean, they're the ones that are wholly behind the, the party that's telling all these lies and disinformation. Mm. But they also have the least to lose by going for that. You see, I don't like, understand what you mean. Can you elaborate? Good, good point. I find like if you were to look at the if you were to look at the demographics of evangelicals. They don't produce evangelical Christianity does not is not a is not a production facility somewhere where they're relying on uh, or or silicon chips to come in on time or bargain agreements or that that come through overseas tariffs. They sell this product they sell is misinformation. So they have nothing to lose other than binding with the misinformation party ideology party because yeah. otherwise people would get smarter and they would lose their products. So they have, they, and then they'd have to change so how they, they sell they the product. they literally could not support a truth party they, is what they you're saying? They can't support, <laughs> hey, learn things because their whole thing is about just trust us. And that's a very, very different dynamic. So like when they, when I say they have nothing to lose, it's I'm sitting on a, a pile of lies essentially and I don't have to work hard to produce this well of lies. So I'm just going to look at see who supports my well of lies or can give me the yeah. mechanism to keep people's yeah. standard of evidence low enough to where I can continue to purport yeah. my lies. Because I'm not I'm not deeply invested in this. I'm just profiting for as long as this is possible. Yeah. Also um, notice that it's the party of autocracy and mm. and uh, top down command leadership as far as it's. It's almost the party is almost militaristic in their uh, uh, autocratic uh, command and, and follow. Um, the the leader speaks and everybody falls in the line. Mm. And, and it's the, a shame they got the and religion is the possible. same way. Is the point that I meant to make? What? It's a shame they got some of the worst leaders possible because you could use a, a structure like that towards some really good. You can use a structure like that for good. We were talking about well, that. Well, the military time. uses it for good, theoretically. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but I was I was thinking like um if you had a stand-up model that was a stand-up model citizen who could control a party like that, that could be used for such a great good. Um we but instead, just due to how corrupt the nature of the party is and corrupt of the nature of the system is, only the most corrupt can get to the very, very top of it. And as a result, when they become in charge of the entire country, we fall into this, we fall backward into this well of corruption where, and, it, and you know it's corrupt in the sense of what does this party stand for? Rel religious respect and freedom. It's like, okay, this leader doesn't even know how to hold a Bible right side up, you know? Like this leader is uh, criminally charged for assaulting a woman, you know, like in the most, in the most clear terms possible. Oh, well, it wasn't that bad. It was like, oh no, well, yeah. it was really the victim's fault. It's like, yeah, why are the, you making excuses for this the, leader that you's trying to that's yeah, trying to the run party, again? The party of morality supports him 100 percent Right. Doesn't, like doesn't matter what he does. Unfalsifiably, too. And it's the yeah. sort of thing that gives me a lot of dread in the uh, but it's one of the senses of dread where it's I know I can vote, but I know I'm in a state that doesn't necessarily uh, will be swayed by the vote that I have. However, yeah. I also know that it's trending in a good direction. And I yeah. and my trend is 
more and more people are influxing their way into Nashville, Tennessee, yeah. and the larger towns in Tennessee. One, because of the low state tax, and two, because like the state taxes and other and states are just going way high up. So we're getting more influx of different kinds of cultures, more influx of different kinds of people from more liberal areas of the states coming into these more conservative areas. And only so many people can fit in these large towns. So they end up starting to spread out into the neighboring towns and, and jurisdictions. And uh, Davidson County, which is where Nashville is at, has multiple millions of people. Whereas the town that I'm in is, I'd be surprised if we had over 70,000. However, most of the people that are living here are becoming, are like scientists, engineers. Uh, we have like a new uh, a battery plant facility for like Tesla cars. So Sounds like an like, Oak Ridge outside of Nashville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, oh, the people here are becoming more like, it's it's nice. Like the candor is nice. And I you can feel it and see that there's like, you look at the the gerrymandering that goes on and seeing like which are blue and which are red and it's spreading out over time and i find like that trend is good if it if the lines keep being redrawn that's 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 its own problem but it is good to see that the rural areas that have a lot of sway are being impregnated by different kinds of points of views which is ultimately not a push towards the political doctrine that i would appreciate but if anything just the enrichment of culture that is necessary to keep us from holding on to these very dogmatic points of view. It tends sure. to be the case that when people are exposed to very different kinds of people and they understand how they work and have some empathy to understand who they are, they don't demonize them as easily as their pastors say they should. And they start to think, oh, I'm in a different kind of culture with different kinds of people. Let me let me vote and express myself in ways that is in solidarity with the fact that I'm not the only person or the person archetype of humanity that that should exist. I'm not the chosen person. In fact, there's a diversity of life out there and I can make choices that are respectful for all of that. Yeah. Um, getting back to the harms of religion per se, uh, rather, than the, rather than politics, um, I've always found that uh, religion could be uh, good for your mental health. If you think, if you believe that you've got an omniscient a uh, ruler, a uh, judge of right and wrong that's watching your every thought and every action, no, how much, no matter how much privacy you have, uh, that can't be conducive to mental health. It, it's um, more of paranoia than anything. Uh, indeed, does this not define paranoia? Can I, I was thinking about that for a while. I think that it's only in the, only in the case when it's incongruent with the reality that you're living in or can cause some sort of degree of stress that it could be considered an issue with your mental health. Like a mass no. delusion, if it's, if, it, if it's incongruence with the reality that you live in? No, just the fact that uh, somebody that has total control over everything in the universe is watching your every thought. No matter, right. Nobody else is involved. It's just watching you every second of the day, right. sleep, uh, you know, it's worse than Santa Claus because <laughs> he can, he, this particular judge can punish you forever. Yeah, but uh, this yeah. God won't punish. So like my impression is most people who believe in God are really just believing in an aspect of themselves. And when they feel that they're thinking about the stuff that they're doing, they just atone that to God. So in a weird way, it's why do people get upset when you say, I don't believe in God? They're like, why are, why are you getting angry at me if I say I don't believe in God? It's because they're personally offended. Because in their mind, a part of them is God. A part of them, like, and ultimately- I don't think they think of it that much. Uh, as, uh, they don't consider that part of it, if at all. I think right. that the God is a separate entity. Consciously, subconsciously, I believe you're right. But if you actually ask them about it, they're going to tell you that- the omniscient ruler of the universe is watching my every thought and judging right, right, right. on every one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's totally subconscious, but I also think that it's tied to the ego as well. It's God loves the music that I like. God is willing to justify the sins when I choose to do the sins. God is willing to forgive me. God likes my family. God likes my car. God likes my home. God likes my financial decisions. Like you're just giving an excuse for yourself to do the things that you're, you like to do under the pretense that it's God. And when someone says, well, I have a different God to believe in, that personally fundamentally offends people. Why? If you if you had a girlfriend that lived in Canada that actually existed and she dyed her <laughs> hair green and you told me, my, my, my girlfriend who lives in Canada has green hair, I'd be like, I don't believe that. It's like, well, too bad for you because I know she's real. Like that's 
Like it could be as real as you saying, hey, Ty, I'm wearing suspenders. I'm like, well, I don't believe you're wearing suspenders. Yeah. Like, well, then you must be blind. But if I said, I don't think you're wearing suspenders right now, Larry, you're like, I am deeply offended. How dare mm-hmm. you? I'm going to get my friends together. Well, and we're gonna I would be deeply place. offended <laughs> if I told you that I was wearing suspenders and I wasn't. If I was right, lying right, and right. I had to defend the lie, I would like, well, then, deeply then offended. Then prove it to me. Prove to me you're wearing suspenders. Right. I don't have to prove it to you. I just yeah. have to tell you and you have to believe it. It's like, thanks. The lady protests too much type of thing. Right, 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 yeah. right. But I do think if if you take the idea that God is essentially just a character that someone made up that they closely identify with to the point where it overlaps with their identity, then all these you know trespasses against their God make <clears> sense <throat> about why they take it personally. And so when we talk <clears throat> about like morality in the sense of like what's good, what's not good, it's always based on what's most comfortable to the person believing it. And and it's and more of an argument of comfort rather than so like people who believe in God don't actually uh, typically Christianity don't typically read the Bible and are following all 312 commandments. Right. They're just Six, living a lifestyle. 613. Gee whiz. And are, <laughs> they're simply living a lifestyle that they can retroactively say, well, you know, God, let me do it. And I feel good about it. So therefore, it must be OK. That's an easy enough. And I, and I feel like that mindset isn't necessarily a mental illness. It's just a salve for not having to actually think about more complex or nuanced forms of morality and ethics. It's a very bad starter pack for how to operate as an adult in a society with different people. But it's not necessarily a mental illness. It's just a excuse to be lazy (laughs) with your thought process that we should shed because with some very basic rationalizations, you can immediately progress to a higher form of morality where it's not based on a dogma where you don't have to make many much more concessions concessions i'm not going around killing people i'm not going around robbing banks i understand the consequences of my actions that's all it requires for me to be a a more moral person than someone who's just following their holy book and it doesn't take a a lifetime of study and stuff like that you know morality to me it comes from considering the impact of your actions on a fellow man Mm. where the immorality of the Bible and Christianity and other religions because is considering your the impact of your actions on a nebulous uh, authoritarian uh, creature, a person, a God. Mm. Uh, you don't consider the male, I mean the, your fellow man, as, right. as much as you do how it will offend your God, which right. gets back to this uh internal camera uh, monitor that you have in your head it does that and it also gives <laughs> some sort of credence of what will happen to you after you die which is also yeah. a fear and if you move to a more secular base of morality and haven't come to terms with death that could be people say well your mental illness is you think you're going to die one day when as i know i'll live forever it's like that's just again arguments from comfort like yeah it could be uncomfortable to know that you will die but if you come to terms with it it's it, the impact isn't as great and you actually realize oh but would i want to live forever next to the right hand of god playing right. a harp all day or like yeah. worshiping all day it's like i wouldn't want that either so like maybe death is actually not that bad and it gives value to the life that i have right now it, it can't hurt me after i'm dead like yeah. i'm not gonna be like oh i'm dead ow ow was, that's not happening <laughs> right yeah. well it, who was it? it was uh Mark Twain said i was dead for billions of years before i was born and it didn't inconvenience me at all Right. And you can think of it as your body is essentially the way how I think of it is my body is my legacy. My body is a tool to craft my legacy. And mm. I want my legacy to have a positive impact on, on the world. And right. that is why I do talks. That's why I made the videos. That's why oh. I'm having these conversations with you. I'm trying right. to put good out there so that other yeah. people can use that as a right. path to make their own good. Right. And that's a good point when you get back to religion and, and the harm. If you talk about the world and the earth, you know, According to the religion, it's going to end, and it's going to end shortly. We don't need to do anything to protect it. You know, we global warming doesn't matter. Jesus is coming next week. Right. Another great harm of religion that we've got to abandon to be able to uh, make uh, the future of mankind better. Hmm. Right. And your purpose exists with God. It's like it takes the the most harmful thing anybody can do is to remove your ability to make your own purpose. And, and chart right. your own course for what so it is in your life, right? right? What a terrible thing to take away. 
but you don't have it taken away from you. That's the grand, that's the grand truth. It's never been taken away from you. You can you make your own purpose. You just have to be able to wake up to it. That's it. And Larry, we're thing is, well, one final point. Uh, sure. Religions always say that what has atheism got to give uh, the world? You know, at least religion gives hope. And I say, there's nothing stopping you from hoping about an afterlife. All these religions do is tell you that there are different afterlifes. Every religion has a different afterlife. Nobody knows. Personally, I would hope for an afterlife with no hell in it. That would be my hope. Right. Anyway, go ahead and uh, do you have any sites that you want us to visit to see your content? Yeah, let's see. Uh, I will check out Joe Mass Pro, which is a disc golf channel on YouTube. The reason why I recommend them is that they not only cover disc golf events, but they also have very thoughtful conversations regarding states of players and laws associated with disc golf as a burgeoning, you know, uh, sport to like an entertainment industry sort of a thing. And it's very good to listen to well-meaning people have a rational conversation about things that don't necessarily have a huge impact on people's lives, like, you know, po politics, boss, all that stuff, but can have like a meaningful, rational conversation based on, based on, you know, like care, empathy, and science at the same time too, without necessarily being overloaded by dogma. I think their coverage on that, the, the trans uh, incorporation into FPO and, and the recent barring of that has been very well done along with their other coverage as well. So I would recommend that. Okay. Um, if you're a member of clergy, I always like to mention that if, if you've come to see that the claims of religion are not justified and, and you're losing your faith, as it were, and feel trapped in the pulpit, there is help for you at the clergyproject.org. That's clergyproject.org without the in front of it. My content can be found at, the, at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. You can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. My YouTube channel handle is at Doubter5. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.